I want to bring in Richard Berthelsen now. He is CTV's royal commentator. Richard, good morning to you. Lots of news on the royal family in a span of, what, an hour and a half. Let's begin with King Charles. He is seeking this treatment, and he wants to, according to what we understand, make it very public so that he will be able to help other men who perhaps are experiencing the same symptoms. Yeah, I think it's an interesting way of framing that announcement. Uh, it is a, quite a morning, as you say. We don't, we haven't had two members of the royal family in hospital at the same time for, in my memory. Uh, so it's it's very uh, significant. Obviously, the palace is trying to get ahead of both of these stories. In the case of the king, not uh, entirely unusual that someone of his gender or his age may have an issue like that. And I think it is a significant contribution to conversations in families, uh, you know, around those issues for men. And many people have taken that position uh, who've gone through that. So that's a procedure that's likely to go next week. Uh, it seems to be a relatively routine kind of thing to some extent, but we do have to take into account that he is at the age of 75. And it, of course, it is going to affect his schedule. And he is one of the, if not the hardest working member of the royal family. So that's very significant, uh, particularly in a royal family that has become increasingly smaller. Similarly, mm -hmm. with the Princess of Wales, she's out of commission for at least two weeks for an operation that took yet place yesterday. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about that, because I think um, if you look at both cases, more eyebrows, if you will, are being raised about what is going on. Uh, with Prince, uh, Princess Kate because she's going to be out of commission for so long. She's going to be in hospital for two weeks and then she will be recovering at home, not resuming any royal duties until after Easter. That's uh, heading into late March, early April. Richard, what do you make of the way Kensington Palace made that announcement? And um, let's start there. Yeah. What do you make of the way that announcement came out? Well, of course, they're talking about something that's happened. So mm -hmm. they're able to report positive news that she successfully got through an operation and she's recovering. So it's not a, on the precipice of an operation. It's following an operation. So I think that's significant. Uh, they wanted to wait. Uh, she also has expressed the view in that release that she does want to have some privacy about her private medical condition, what's going on inside her abdominal uh, cavity, which I don't think is would not be surprising to a lot of people. And of course, she's following the example of the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh and other members of the royal family who have been very reticent to share information. I mean, it's only now we're getting information about exactly what was the, the Queen was facing in the last year of her life, mm -hmm. you know, three almost a year after her death. So members of the royal family do want to preserve some area of their life where it's a bit of private information. Of course, an absence of that length of time from the public uh, realm does have to be explained and obviously a proactive announcement in that regard. It's obviously the kind of operation that is going to prevent her from getting back in and out of cars, in and out of engagements for a while. So I think there's several things that it could be. I would defer to medical uh, professionals as to what that may be. She's inviting us not to speculate about it. We may get further information as she go as we go along on that particular case. But again, these are two very senior members of the royal family taking them out of mm -hmm. commission for a period of time in a family that is short of, of members doing public work is a very significant issue. Right, right. And just back to Kate's condition for a moment, of course, this is going to invite all kinds of speculation, but we understand that it is not cancer. This is what we're being told. Um, so in terms of having two royals, one of them being the king, out of the spotlight for a couple of months performing their royal duties, what do you think that means, Richard? And will others step up to the plate? Well, they will, but you know, everyone's diaries are done long in advance. So there's not entirely a lot of flexibility uh, in that. We had understood that the Prince and Princess of Wales, William and Catherine, would be undertaking a European trip, possibly to Italy in the spring. That may jeopardize that. We are also expecting Canadian royal watchers are expecting a visit by the King and Queen probably this year, maybe in the spring. We know they're going to Australia in the fall, possibly New Zealand and Papua New Guinea. So you know, there is a lot of travel in the, in the schedule. This may impact that. Um, again, we don't have a lot of information. And I also would point out, not only did the palace take pains, I think, to brief reporters that the princess is not suffering cancer or a cancer, the surgery was not related to cancer, but that it was scheduled uh, and it was planned. And it's not like she was taken in an ambulance to the hospital. So they're trying to really dampen down the level of public concern. And I think the same is true with the king. 
because they've done this well in advance and indicated that, you know, he's planning to use this as a teachable moment. Richard Berthelsen, great to have you with us today. Thanks so much.